Welcome back to Film in Minnesota. I am Rohana Power. I'm Alan Tracy. And today we have a special guest that has joined us. Um, please welcome Josh Zapata Palmer. Hi, Josh. How are you? Hi, Rihanna. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. And thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. We're really excited to have you today. Um, and we have all sorts of things we want to dive into with you. But first, um, I just want to get to know you a little bit better. So I have a special question to ask you. Okay, I'm ready. Josh, do you have, or of course you do, you probably have many. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to ask you for like your favorite one. What is um, a fun, special, uh, potentially secret um, talent that you have that others, you know, may or may not know about? Okay. I love that question, first off, and um, thank you. That's very, it's very kind of you to think so highly of me that I have lots of special skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say this is, this is one that I have that um, people who know me probably do know this one, but uh, people who don't, and Rihanna, it's, you know, we're just getting to know each other. I don't know you <laughs> very much at all, so this is something fun about me is... Um, I am a mime. I have mime training and mime experience, and I used to make my money doing mime. <laughs> really? Yeah. How did you get into that? That's so interesting. Yeah, um, I got into it in high school, actually. It was because I, I was in theater, and uh, I loved acting and doing anything in theater, and uh, I got cast in a play called The Arkansas Bear, which is a children's theater play. And there's a character in there called Mime, and he's mm -hmm. obviously a mime. And uh, <laughs> the director cast me as that because he saw my, my pointy jawline and he said, oh, you look like you could be a mime, so <laughs> why don't you just learn how to do this on your own? And um, <laughs> so he just cast me as that and said, you're very expressive with your body and you got this funny looking face. So. Um, go on YouTube and figure it out. And um, I remember being like a little bit offended, but also really honored <laughs> because <laughs> it was a fun experience. And so I just started YouTubing how to mime and I found um, various YouTube videos on how to do it. And, you know, I learned the basics, how to do the staircase thing, how to do the, the mime wall thing. Um, uh, and I was like, wow, this is really fun. I enjoy this thoroughly. Um, and uh, when I was a really young kid, I actually I had a lot of anxiety. And I, I was very social. And so I loved to be with people, um, even though I had anxiety. And one thing that would happen is if I would get really upset or really anxious, I would kind of shut down and I would shut out the world and say, well, if this is how the world's going to be, then I'm just not going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that um, through mime, you can, you can do that. You actually have permission to do that. You shouldn't mm -hmm. talk and you should communicate in other ways. And uh, it became really, really fun for me to um, express myself without my words and, you know, just using my face and my, my different positions in my body and my hands and and after that, I, um, after that play, it, it went really well. It was really fun. And um, after that, I kept doing it because I liked it so much. And I, I started doing mm. it for some libraries and um, performing for like just kids primarily. And I, I just loved doing it because kids thought it was the, so amazing. And, um, you know, their kids are great critics because if they like something, they'll tell you right away just as much as if they don't like something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they kept liking it. So I just kept doing it. And um, before you know it, I was in college studying theater and um, I got to know a little bit more about mime and I got and I I got a job at Valley Fair and I started miming oh, wow. for for them. So I was uh, and at the amusement park um, performing on the streets and meeting people and miming and um, I would do it at other libraries. I started bringing it to schools um, and all kind of throughout college. Uh, I met a bunch of really cool people through that, um, jugglers and clowns and other mimes and um, ended up kind of meeting people in the circus world and it was so much fun. and. Um, uh, I kind of stopped doing it because it, it, uh, I got out of college and it, um, 
doesn't pay very much. <laughs> so mm -hmm, right. I, uh, I kind of needed an, an actual or more of a career, not an actual career, because it, it is one, but it, um, mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, the training that I did in school was a lot more acting-based theater, um, and I, I learned more about um, nonverbal communication, not just about, you know, miming. Uh, and then I, I, I did take some classes. There's um, other online classes, and I, I just did a lot of it on my own, and met some of the mimes in the area of the Twin Cities and kind of learned from them, other clowns like John Ferguson and um, Neil Scoy and uh, Benjamin Domask, uh, other people who shared that passion and just were doing it like that. And, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's the long-winded story to what is my secret weird special skill. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Um, Thanks. That's so cool. I don't think I've ever met anyone who... Um, who's done any miming, uh, let alone, like, I assume that that, um, you know, continued pushing you into this, you know, career mm -hmm. path that you're in now. Um, so that's just so fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a kind of an odd route, <laughs> but yeah, it was really, really fun, um, to, to do that. So thanks. Uh, how did you, how did you get started in film? Um, that's a good question. Because my uh, my journey is sporadic, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I I bounced around to a lot of different things. But um, long story short, I did like video work in <laughs> video work, whatever you would call it, in high school when I was just making projects for like school, mm -hmm. um, and it was just really fun. I had a I had a one of those big shoulder cameras that had the cassette thing, the VHS tape in it, you know? I don't even know what it was called, but <laughs> it was my parents' camera, and I would make little Lego stop-motion things as a kid oh, cool. um, with, with my brother. They were terrible. <laughs> um, and some of them, like, they weren't even stop-motion. It was just us pretending it was stop motion <laughs> <laughs> so moving it like with the we had like a cheerio i have a very specific memory of like a cheerio and a unicorn trying to cross over the bed <laughs> oh. so um we started doing stuff like that and then um when i was in high school i was making more like for projects and things i'd make little videos and then i would uh um I went to college to do theater because I had really enjoyed doing that. And um, I was going to double major in theater and media communications. Um, but I actually, I, my first, it was like a production emphasis in this media communications class. And in the first two classes, I was like, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I don't want to learn this in class. It was like, just a lot of talking about doing stuff and there wasn't a lot of projects it wasn't very hands-on and so I was just like if I'm gonna learn film and like video production and stuff I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna do it on my own because talking about it in this setting just wasn't not working for me mm -hmm. so um, I focused on doing theater in my schooling because it was more fun mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I, I did a lot of that and then um, I did some more video work uh, through college like um, a part of the welcome week thing where I was like helping to welcome new freshmen I would help make a video that would teach new freshmen about what the school was like and things like that um, but my actual kind of like introduction I made my first short film through that welcome week thing um, called the paper jam and it was like a silent film about a college student who needed to submit a paper but the printer was broken <laughs> so <laughs> um simple little story um and that was really really fun um and after i did that i was like you know maybe i could do more film stuff uh, it's a little bit more flexible than doing theater because when you do theater you just spend all this time doing it and uh, you know i love rehearsals i love acting and being with all those people and it was really cool but there was something about that that i really liked um and then um, after college, I did a bunch of theater, and uh, and then I needed to get a job to pay the bills more um, because uh, I was getting married. I had proposed to my girlfriend, and I was like, uh, I think I want to have something that I can contribute more <laughs> financially. <laughs> to, I just felt the pressure, and I, I didn't stop doing any of my theater stuff. I just 
wanted to, you know, provide a little bit more for my beautiful wife um, or fiance at the time. And uh, so I got this job uh, at ACR Homes, uh, which is a group home for adults with disabilities. And um, I went from doing direct care for these uh, adults with disabilities to doing IT. And then um, they found out that I was really creative and um, a lot more creative than I was technical. And the IT stuff was like not super jiving, but it was working fine. And so within a week of starting that job, they were like, what if you did something else? <laughs> and, um, I was like, um, okay, well, what, what else do you have? And they're like, well, we, we know that your resume is theater. And so, you know, we have these videos we want to make for marketing. Like maybe you could try that. And I was like, yeah, I do. I do videos. So, um, I started doing that and it was really, really fun. And I spent three years then making a bunch of marketing and vi training videos for them. And I learned a lot more about production and I got the thing that I wanted when I was in school, which was to do it hands on. Um, and uh, they were so gracious in giving me the freedom to be creative with my marketing and training videos. I, they weren't just like, you know, talking heads, interviewing or doing something like that. I got to do kind of some documentary style mm. uh, videos. And then I even got to do some performing through the training because they, they asked me to also speak. So I was doing the behind the camera and I was performing it and I was editing them and doing and I was writing the script so I was doing everything um, and through that kind of like three years of being kind of this intensive creative person I, I, I learned a bunch about doing film and I was like you know I think I could do more and with a, a friend of mine um, I uh, he and in, he included me in this project where he was encouraging me to write a film and so we wrote my very first outside of school project called we are kickball and it was this silly little short film about um like a, a small rural church that um had two very split aisles of the pews uh, and there was this side and there was the other side and they didn't like each other and this new person <laughs> comes into the church and they're like both sides of the church are arguing over wh where she should sit mm -hmm. and um, they decide to uh, play a game of kickball and whoever wins she gets to sit with them um, <laughs> and it was silly and, and ridiculous but it was also about um, something really serious that I have experienced because something that that exact story actually happened to me growing up in church. Oh, wow. Um, it, it was a little bit less dramatic. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, they weren't exactly doing it that way. But I had observed how these churches were um, being very exclusive and mm -hmm. very like there was this kickball tournament between these different churches and they were like, really invested in it and like how they and I was like this is preposterous why would the like the Catholic Church the way they played kickball was different from the way the Baptist Church played kickball but they were playing together and so they couldn't agree on how to play kickball and I was like wow this is really like <laughs> uh, true to Christianity it seems <laughs> so, um, so yeah then I, I wrote this little film about it and um it was really fun and I learned a ton about the whole process outside of like the industrial marketing and training world and mm -hmm. um, and I had a blast doing that and then um, through that the friend who had encouraged me to do it his name is Josh Szeski uh, he and I became really good buddies through that process and we decided to kind of start working together more often so every time he would write a film I would be involved in some way and same with me when I did something I'd include him and We'd help each other kind of just do this, this weird life that we have during film. So <laughs> that's kind of my story. <laughs> I love it. Um, so that's your first film that you ever, um, outside of like school and the industrial world made. Can you tell us mm -hmm. a little bit more about your most recent work and how this project really came about um, to be something that you really wanted to make? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I'm doing a lot of things right now, as um, I think <laughs> everybody in film does, as I'm learning. We all <laughs> do a million things. Um, and I just finished a short for Z-Fest that I actually just acted in with oh. John. Oh, fun. Um, 
And that was really, really fun. It was called uh, Neurogenesis. And it is about um, these twin brothers who, uh, one of them is a doctor and he loses his um, ability to be a doctor essentially through like a, a disease. And, um, but he's super smart and because of it, he kind of goes a little bit crazy and tries to um, essentially take his twin brother's um, brain power to restore his own physical and mental um, capacity. Um, so he, uh, through this scientific process, like kind of takes some of, uh, using his, like the neurons in his twin brother's <laughs> brain to t reteach his own brain how to use his legs again and how to um, have function in different parts of his body. Um, and it was really fun because I got to play, um, I'm, the, I'm a twin in it. And so I'm playing the, uh, the brother who, is not a doctor and then um, we decided just to learn and to try something new to actually use deep fake technology to do the twin part. Oh wow. So it, that was really fun and insane and like so also stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's turning out so far surprisingly well. Josh sent me a picture the other day and I, and I was like kind of shocked. <laughs> how um, we had a body double um, and who played the other actor, or who the other actor who played um, the twin. And uh, they, the, it was really surprising how he was able to make his face look just like mine with glasses and everything. It was just wow. nuts. <laughs> so hopefully that turns out well. That's one thing I'm working on um, for Z-Fest. And then the other thing that I'm working on right now is uh, a, a, a series, actually. I, I just finished the... Um, we finished production on uh, a pilot episode of a series, and we are in post now. We, are, we just launched a Kickstarter um, in March for a series called Hidden Falls. And that one is like a... Um, a, a fantasy series. It's about uh, a prince and how he, on the on the very beginning of the film, and you'll see it even in the trailer if you watch it. So I'm not giving anything <laughs> away. Um, his father dies, and he has to, and his wife gets taken from him, and he has to decide: Do I go pursue my wife and chase after her from this guy who took my wife, or do I become king? Because it's in this medieval fantasy world, and mm -hmm. he has to kind of grapple with that. Um, and he ends up calling two of his old friends to kind of help him on this quest uh, who currently do not get along at all. And so it's kind of about how um, they have to reconcile their friendship in order to accomplish a really important mission. And so it has to do with reconciliation and friendship and duty and honor. And um, it's been so much fun and I've learned so much because this community that I've been making it with is some new people that I haven't really worked with before. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing fantasy <laughs> and I like, I'm so above, like out of my comfort zone with a lot of it. And <laughs> um, it's been really, really fun. Um, so we, we finished our pilot and we're, um, well, we're, it's not quite done yet. We're still in post, um, but we're working on that. And then we have this Kickstarter to try and raise some money so we can produce um, more of the episodes. Mm -hmm. How did it come about? Um, like, did you decide that you wanted to do a web or like a series? And so that's, and that led you down this path with this story? Or did you already have, mm. um, like, was the story sort of developed first? And then it just came about that it was going to, you know, best be a series versus maybe a film? Or something. How did that yeah. happen? That's a good question. Um, it kind of came about that the writer of it, she had, um, her name is Abby Day and is a friend of mine uh, that I knew from theater actually. And um, w we filmed the whole thing in 2020, which, as we all know, <laughs> is COVID season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, the story goes that um, we were planning on actually producing a play that year. Um, Abby was um, wanting to do like maybe some Shakespeare in the park or something like that mm -hmm. in the back of her house and then COVID happened and we couldn't have any people so she was like well let's maybe I have the story idea I've been wanting to kind of do um, and mm -hmm. she and a friend um, 
just we're exploring um, the woods. I don't know if you guys know Dawson Elkey, he's a local actor. Um, but he and Abby were our friends and um, they were exploring the state park locally uh, in St. Paul called Hidden Falls. <laughs> um, and they were like, gosh, this would be a beautiful place to film some sort of <laughs> fantasy thing. <laughs> And um, so it kind of started with that, and then uh, they challenged each other to write a script out of it, um, kind of inspired by the beauty of nature that's in that area and the things that they've been talking about with um, COVID and with uh, how, how tense all these relationships seem to be mm-hmm. uh, with everything that's been happening. And so they sat down and Abby wrote out this concept and um, Dawson actually didn't write anything. <laughs> he, oh. <laughs> he, he says that he used it as a, he tricked her because it was um, like, they said, next week, let's come together with a basic concept and whoever's concept is better, we'll just like expand on it more and it'll be a fun writing exercise. And he says that he specifically posed that challenge to Abby so that she would write something and he could just act it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's clever. Uh, yes, well. it's very clever. <laughs> But I think he actually did end up contributing quite a bit. He he did um, help develop the concept a lot because mm-hmm. he's also very smart and um, very creative. So he he helped <laughs> come up with a lot of the ideas of some of the um, beyond the first episode. And so what happened was the two of them sat down, discussed this idea, thought, wow, this is really actually really fun and really relevant. Um, and the story kept getting bigger and bigger. And um, uh, Abby had um, drawn from some other ideas she had worked with throughout her artistic life um, with these other friendship stories she had toyed with, these two characters. And um, so she kind of pulled some of that in. And the story just started to evolve and get bigger and bigger. And um, she pulled in me because, like I had said, we were going to direct a, a play and asked if I wanted to do something film instead. And I was like, sure what like Mm -hmm. a little short film and she was like no (laughs) i have so much more (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so from the beginning it was this big you know it turned into this really big thing and she had originally said let's just film this with our iphones and like have a good time in the woods um, and when she brought me on and when she brought on a couple others, um, Felicia Cunningham as a, a producer and, um, uh, and then I brought in Josh and we were, we just talked and we were like, you know, let's like really invest in this. Cause this seems like a really important story. Mm-hmm. It's like, not just about, you know, fun people in the woods. This is about like, how do you reconcile a broken friendship? Like that's really important right now. Cause, mm-hmm. um, I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of broken friendships in my life and it's not been easy to um, know how to go past some of those things. You know, sometimes um, you you really disagree with someone on something and it's hard to get past mm-hmm. it. Uh, you know, one of you grows in one direction and another one of you grows in the other direction and how do you deal with that? Like, so it felt really important and big and so it just kind of expanded and into something even bigger than we ever could have set out with. Right. Well, it sounds like you guys had a lot of inspiration from Hidden Falls itself. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose, Josh, what or who or what inspires you when it comes to making films or series or whatever? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because I I think I'm inspired by a lot of different things. I, I think my biggest inspiration is my personal Um, relationships that I've had in my life Uh, I've found whether it's we are kickball and there's this silly story about um, a you know church relationship that is not a good one (laughs) or if it's about this um, reconciling something broken uh, those are really personal to me I think those are things that come from things that have happened in my life Um, because I think relationships are really really important and to me they they're central and so I take a lot of inspiration from that um, beyond that, I guess I would say I take inspiration from like um, observing other people around me and watching a lot of films as well because I mm-hmm. um, I love classic uh, like silent film stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, hence my little like my very very first school film was a silent film. Um, 
because I love Buster Keaton and I love Jacques Tati and uh, Charlie Chaplin and um, uh, the, Lloyd, uh, shoot, what is his first name? <laughs> I don't remember. Lloyd, Lloyd, um, shoot, what is his name? Oh, anyway, <laughs> silent film stars. <laughs> I really loved that. And so I take a lot of inspiration from um, watching those as well as um, seeing how they can kind of manifest in, in, uh, in the own stories that I create, whether it's some sort of physical comedy or, or if it's a relationship or if it's some, somebody extraordinary and a ridiculous or like an extraordinary person in a, in a very normal situation like, uh, like Mr. Bean. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's like a ridiculous guy who's in a really normal life. <laughs> you yeah, know. I love Mr. Bean. Me too. <laughs> oh man, he's brilliant. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, Josh, you've done a lot when it comes to having different roles and in the filmmaking process. It sounds like. Um, Mm -hmm. So I have kind of a two-parter question for you about that. First part is what role that you've had before, whether it's acting or or directing or maybe writing or what have you, do you enjoy Mm -hmm. the most? And then also what role have you maybe not dipped your toes into yet, but you would really love to? Mm. Sure, yeah. Um, Well, I do really love acting. Um, that's, so that's really fun for me. Uh, I like doing, um, acting in any capacity really. Uh, but I've also recently really fallen in love with directing. Um, there's something about being able to see the whole arc of a story and see how it plays out and be able to kind of bring in people and tie things together and see all the connections Mm -hmm. that can be made with a film, you know, like whether it's the the characters or it's the um the production design or if it's the soundtrack um i just think it's so fun to be able to work with all of that uh it, it synthesizes a lot of things into one so i've really enjoyed that um and something that i haven't done but i think would be really fun would probably be something sound re- uh, like music related um because i haven't like composed music for anything before, but I love music. I I play a lot of different instruments. <laughs> I don't know if I play oh, them really? well, really? but I play them. Um, yeah, I play ukulele, banjo, banjo lele. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a little rack over there. As you can, <gasps> what I'm looking at. <laughs> All the instruments on the it. wall. Um, and I play the piano and guitar and drums. Um, so I play a lot, but um, I've never really, like, done it for a film, for a story. It's really just for Mm -hmm. fun or it's for, (laughs) because it's, you know, it's fun to explore the the power of music. It's like the closest thing in the world to magic to me. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I just love that. That's so cool. Um, I'm jealous about the ukulele part. That's like a lifelong, (laughs) like, I would love to be able to someday do that. Uh, That's You could totally do it. (laughs) Totally. I'm going to, and then I'm going to call you up, and we're just going to like sit and play the ukulele like on Facebook. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we'll jam despite the delay in Zoom calls. <laughs> we'll do it anyway, and it'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> it'll be <laughs> what other questions do you guys got for me? Um, well, Josh, I mean, uh, have you only made films in Minnesota, or have you done work outside of Minnesota at all, anywhere? Oh, uh, I I have not done any films outside of Minnesota. Uh, I've actually only done film work here. Uh, I've done theater outside. I did touring with um, the National Theater for Children in California and Arizona. Um, and I did like some fringe theater work in Florida, but no film outside of Minnesota, hmm. no. What's uh, just a side question on that? Like, what what's theater like in those states compared to here? Um, <laughs> theater in Arizona is not great. Uh, they don't have a lot of infrastructure for it. It's really small. 
Um, mm-hmm. And we we did a, a tour through um, a lot of schools, and so uh, that was really fun. But I learned that it's not normal for theaters in Arizona or schools in Arizona to have like a theater program of any kind at all. Oh, sad. Um, I know, and like I thought that that was really weird because growing up in Minnesota, theater is like everywhere. Yeah. Like it's in every school. Right. And uh, so that was that was a bit odd. Um, and then in Florida, I didn't spend a ton of time there. It was just one show I did at the Fringe Festival, but their Fringe Festival is uh, really great. I would say it's even better than our Minnesota oh, Fringe, wow. um, which was a surprise because I really like our Minnesota mm-hmm. Fringe. <laughs> Um, but th- they are connected to the Canadian Association of Fringe Festivals. Hmm. Um, surprise, surprise, yeah. being like as far away from right. Canada as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, yeah, they're a part of this big association. And so they have all these, like this support. Um, and so their fringe is, is really, really interesting. It's um, a little bit bigger than what we have, even though what we have here is um, a lot more like, you can kind of do anything. Theirs is a little bit more, um, you you have to, I don't think it, there's a, um, it's not like a lottery. I can't quite remember. Is it a lottery or if it's a, like uh, judged some capacity? Like you can't do anything there versus here you can kind of do whatever. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, in, when it comes to the fringe world, that's, that's something that's different. Um, and then I would say, however, beyond that, like our regional theater here is, you know, exceptional. I, I think they do really good work and are a very tight community and have a lot of really great things. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of differences. Wow. Um, what would you say? And this one might be difficult. Um, okay, I'm Because, I mean, I, f- I feel like there might be so many answers, but... Um, <laughs> Because film, I mean, filmmaking is a challenging craft, yeah. um, especially when, you know, someone like you who can do so many different things, um, so you can run into challenges with all of them. But what would you say is the biggest challenge for you when it comes to just making a film in general? Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Deep sigh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um, the first thing that comes to mind is, I would say... Um, assembling the right team of people for your project. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's really tough because every project in my experience has required a different group of people. Um, I know that you, you can kind of bring in like a lot of the same people. Like if you've got a crew who's really knowledgeable, you can kind of bring them from project to project. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true to some capacity. Um, But I've, I have found it difficult to do that. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's it's hard. I have to really gel with everybody, and so I, I tend to be pulling people from lots of different things that I've encountered and see, you know, what... When I'm on the film set and I'm shooting this comedy, I want to make sure that everybody who's on set is lighthearted and playful and fun and, like, mm-hmm. willing to let this happen, but also, you know, professional enough so we can actually get the thing done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then if I'm doing a drama, you know, I want to make sure that people understand that uh, my set's going to be a little bit different. You know, I might not be as playful as, mm-hmm. um, as on a comedy, but... I'm generally a really playful person, so even then. <laughs> um, so, but I've really struggled with that. I've, I've, I've had a hard time with that. Mm-hmm. Now, was there another part yeah, of that question? There, well, yeah, there are multiple challenges, of course. And, uh, yeah, definitely. I understand because, like, if you want to assemble the same team, let's say, maybe some people aren't available. Yeah, um, yeah. Because they are good at what they do. Right. It happens a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Because I know, uh, gosh, I can only imagine during a series now that you're prepping to do, mm-hmm. like how hard that's going to be to yes. keep everyone going for how many episodes? Yeah, we have eight episodes planned. Um, and... It, uh, I, I would be remiss if I did not say I was concerned about that. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it, yeah, and like concern. consistency and um, how many 
how many like minutes or pages do you have for each episode right now? Um, we've got about um, it's roughly fifteen minutes per episode. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so they're longer okay. web series episodes. You know, typically those are less than ten. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, they're so they're a little bit longer. Um, the first episode is currently running um, with like credits and an intro. It's about eighteen minutes. So. That one's a little bit longer, and um, we'll see how that goes. Which means, you know, we're gonna have a lot of shoot days. <laughs> right. Um, so, what is it that maybe you're looking forward to the most about making uh, or starting this project, or any other projects that you have going on, like Irons in the Fire? Mm. But also, how do how do you like prep for something like that now during COVID, like COVID pr- productions? Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Your experiences. Oh, COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> frustrating (laughs) we um we had started our pre-production before covid um oh well rephrase rephrase um uh abby and dawson had their very first like writing thing pre-covid and they were like let's just kind of come up with this idea and then it then covid happened and they were like oh well like let's actually do this um so we kind of knew all along we were going to have to deal with that uh and we ended up um, crafting a COVID, um, like, uh, what do you call that? COVID guidelines um, thing that we uh, stuck to. And we knew that, you know, if anybody yeah. is remotely sick, uh, in, in, these are your symptoms. And we filmed it in July, August, and September of 2020. So mm-hmm. in July, you know, that was still kind of in the phase where we didn't really know a ton about what could happen with COVID. Um, and so we were trying to be really cautious. We wore masks all the time, um, except when the actors were rolling and, um, or when we were rolling and the actors were doing their thing. Um, that was, that was challenging and we were very, I was pretty anxious about like, uh, if people get sick, what are we going to do? You know, we'll have to postpone stuff. And, um. We knew that all along, and it was just a risk we decided to take. And fortunately, uh, nobody got sick at all um, during that time. It was kind of crazy, kind of a miracle. Um, and um, going forward, you know, when you asked what um, what I'm excited about, what I'm looking forward to with it as well, and how to kind of go forward with the COVID stuff. I'm really excited, and I always get really excited about production when you're actually on set because um, the thing most important to me about film and I guess in my life and just me in general is um, relationship, like I said before. And when you're in production, you get to have that. You get to have that kind of intense community during those days. Um, whether it's conversations you're having on set about the film or, you know, and you're, and you're preparing, you know, um, to do the to like start off your shoot or if it's during your pre-production and you're, you know, contacting people about it, that community piece has always been something I constantly look forward to because when you're there shooting and you've done all this preparation, you're, you're ready and you're finally there. It's like, you can really play, you know, you can really um, get to know people through that. Um, So I always look forward to that. And, um, and we know, you know, with our, uh, our, Production cycle is going to be pretty long um, because we don't have a ton of budget. <laughs> um, so we're like, well, if we want you to do this. You don't say. Yeah, right? Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> we filmed the first episode for about $4,000 for out of our pockets. And um, mm-hmm. that's why we're doing the Kickstarter to try and you know make it so we don't have to spend it out of our own money um, and uh, pay people a for their time at least enough for to cover gas or you know something like that Mm -hmm. um but because of that you know we're asking for a lot of favors we're asking for a lot of passion uh and for people to get really on board with this because they believe in it and um and we're also saying this might take a little bit longer than expected so our actors fortunately are like so gung-ho about it (laughs) like (laughs) they really love it and so they're super committed to um to doing it and I would say pretty much everybody on our crew has been really passionate too, and they've really enjoyed. I don't think I've had a trouble with anyone like have like being excited about it, about being a part of it. And 
it just means that you know we we take our time and if we have to reschedule something because of covid we are flexible and patient and we do that and um Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we did have one shoot that got canceled, not because anyone got sick, but, um, our location, uh, <laughs> essentially didn't, they weren't ready for mm. a COVID thing to like, for people to come in during COVID. Mm. So they had to like figure their stuff out and cancel something and then give them time to, to do that, which was, it turned out being fine. But, um, so going forward, yeah, I'm really excited to get people together again during production, um, to to talk about this project, all the work that I've put into it, all, how much I care about, you know, the, <laughs> the, the values that we're talking about in this story, um, to be able to talk about it, discuss it, and like see it happen, and discuss with actors how we can make it flow, and how to talk with my DP about, you know, what angles we should do differently to communicate different things. You know, oh, it's just so fun! <laughs> you guys get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Um, so we've mentioned it a couple times, but, um, you know, there's in the film community, there's always more than one thing going on. Like yeah. you have, yeah. um, you know, the Z fest film mm -hmm. that you did and you've got this big, exciting project. Um, but kind of looking ahead, what, what's next for you? Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a big question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so if I if I put Hidden Falls aside because that's going to probably be you know a couple years <laughs> I would guess with time, you know, just <laughs> investing all the time into it. So if I put that aside, um just assuming that that happens and we you know continue with that, um I would say something else that is in my life that I'm looking forward to is um in May, actually, this May, uh, my wife and I are traveling to South Africa. Um, yeah. Um, That's so exciting. We are going to be there for two months um, to basically uh, learn. We're, we're there to, um, for one, she studied reconciliation in school. Her, her degree is in mm -hmm. reconciliation studies. And... Um, so part of that learning process was doing a study abroad program in Cape Town mm -hmm. and learning about apartheid, which was their like systemic racism that they were dealing mm -hmm. with and um, yeah. with Nelson Mandela and that whole story. So um, we went there when we got married on our honeymoon and I was like, oh my goodness, this place Aww. is so cool. <laughs> like, we got to come <laughs> back here. <laughs> So yeah. we were we set our sights to to go again um, in 2021, and um, through a whole bunch of like circumstances, it turned out we actually can go <laughs> because um, South really? Africa is open, and um, Ashley, my wife, uh, works in the restaurant industry, and she's able to get her vaccine and. Um, Hopefully by May, uh, I will maybe get mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, yeah. But um, they, their borders are open. They were closed for a while, but um, mm -hmm. they, they're open and they're doing a lot of things similar here. So I'm very excited to be going there to basically um, take two months and learn about um, the process of reconciliation and the process of dealing with uh, systemic racism and the process of mm -hmm. expanding your worldview um, because I think for a long time I've just been sitting around, you know, dealing with my selfish little life as the very blessed, like, white person that I am. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow, Josh, that sounds amazing. Thank you. That's it's yeah. terrifying. Incredible. If I'm really honest, I'm, like, teared out of my, scared out of my mind. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um... I guess where where can uh, people find your work, Josh, and how can they contact you? Maybe. Yeah, um, I have a website. You can find me at joshypalms.com. dot com. That's uh, J O S H I E P A L M S. Um, so that's like my portfolio site. You can find me there. I'm also Joshy Palms on Facebook and Instagram. I love that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I seriously, seriously do. Okay, um, so. Josh, this is the big question, uh, and big I I feel like this is one that I probably should have warned you of. We were going to ask earlier, um, so I apologize. <laughs> I do this to everyone. Um, but 
in everything that you're doing here, everything you're creating and, and all the amazing people that you meet and you work with, um, when it comes down to it at the end of the day and at the end of, you know, um, these amazing careers, what do you want people to really remember most about you? Oh gosh. (laughs) (laughs) About me? Oh man. Um, okay. Well, okay, if I get down to it, and if I get existential about that, I would say if I want, what I want people to remember about me is that I really, I really cared about them. I really care about people. Um, that's what I would hope that people, people remember that I have compassion. Because I try mm-hmm. really hard to remember that like life is not about me, and there's so many people to meet, and there's so many beautiful things that people have done and to talk about and relationships to have and to learn and to expand your your perspective on so i guess the first thing that comes on comes up is existentially that uh people remember that i care (laughs) (laughs) um or you know something like that i don't know (laughs) yeah no absolutely i think that makes sense yeah, we I mean, should all, I, we should all want that a little bit. I would think so. I mean, I think yeah. I think people forget that like life is really about love, and like where is the love in anything that we do, whether it's this conversation or if it's meet meeting somebody else or if it's making a film, and and I I think that's what I would want to be remembered for, and I hope that I'm I'm getting close to loving people, <laughs> and you know, um, if anything else, I guess I would probably say. I think people will remember that I'm kind of a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the best. Yeah. Everyone should strive for that, honestly. So. Yeah. Well, Josh, thank you for joining us, for spending some time out of your day to talk to us. Um, good luck to you on your web series. Thank and you. Uh, be safe. Get your vaccine before going to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the hope. And, well, thank you guys. Um, I really appreciate what you yeah. guys do here. You conduct wonderful interviews. I love listening to your podcast, so I think you do great work, and I've been honored to get to know you as well. well thank you. It's been yeah. fantastic having you on, Josh. We'll have to follow up when you get back from South Africa and yeah, see how you're doing. Let's do that, because who knows? My life <laughs> might completely change by then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for listening. 